How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So the markets were all over the place today. We had the S&P break even. The Dow went down 0.6%. The NASDAQ 100 went up 1.3%. And we had the Russell go down 1.2%. So today, we're going to break down the markets. We're going to take a look at some charts, my thoughts on the markets, and a bunch of stocks that I'm looking at right now. So sit back, relax, go down below, get two free stocks from Webull. Those are valued up to $1,600. All you have to do is use my link, deposit $100, get your two free stocks, and if you don't like Webull, you can simply take out that initial $100 deposit, hence why the stocks are literally free, and those are linked right down below. So let's get into it, and like I said, markets were all over the place today, guys, and I'm not kidding. We had the small caps get slammed, tech did well, the Dow stocks didn't do well, and like I said, the S&P broke even, and I would consider today a pretty good day for the bulls, at least in terms of SPY, despite SPY breaking even. And let me explain why. You guys can see here on the 180-day, four-hour chart, SPY ended up holding 419, 420, right by the 180 SMA here on the four hour chart. And where did we hold that? Well, we held it at a higher low. And if you look on the intraday chart, we actually rallied for the rest of the day. I mean, sure, it was really choppy. We did get a big crash, um, you know, in the middle of the day. SPY went from 423 down to about 419. So it did drop about 0.7%. And from that point, uh, like I said, we pretty much closed on an upswing from 419 up to almost $422 per share. And now after hours, we're up above 422 per share. And we're up about 38, eh, more like 30, actually, yeah, exactly 38 cents after market hours. So by the looks of it, like I said, despite uh, the S&P going down a little bit, breaking even, Bulls won the day. Bulls won the day because they held the 180 SMA here. And this is a good sign that the uptrend's continuing. And maybe we end up going up to test those highs from a couple of days ago, those all time highs at $426.21. And when it comes down to QQQ, let's take a look at that. This one actually hit. An all-time high today, all-time high, up 1.3%, and that all-time high was hit at $346.38. And what do you know? We called this out. We literally called this out yesterday, and I mentioned to you all, look, if we hold 339 which was that all-time high from the middle of February, if we hold it and the 50 SMA here on the four-hour chart at a higher low, watch for the push-up. And did I know or did I suspect we were going to hit all-time highs today? day no I did not suspect that but we did end up doing that but what I did suspect was if we did hold 339 and the 50 SMA which we did we were going to see some sort of rally from the bulls and we did get that and you can see it very clearly here on the intraday chart we held 339 all pre-market and once that bell hit this morning at 9 30 a.m on the east coast boom this ended up exploding from 339 all the way to 346 within the first two hours of trading. And that was a pretty big move. We're talking about almost a 2% move there, 1.75% to be exact. And we pretty much coasted for the rest of the day here. And I'm actually seeing a bit of an ascending triangle on the intraday chart here, which is very bullish. So for tomorrow and for next week, I want to see if uh, QQQ is able to break out of the ascending triangle. I want to see if the ascending triangle plays out, which would mean, you know, we end up taking out the highs from today and going a little bit higher. Um, you know, we break out. That would be the ascending triangle playing out. And we got jobless claims numbers today, and those actually came in worse than expected. And you guys know at this point, the markets don't care about the jobless claims, which they should, in my opinion, because we're still seeing hundreds of thousands of American of Americans 
filing or filing for these jobless claims benefits. I mean, this week we had 412,000 that claimed, and that was versus the 360,000 estimated. So that number came in about 50,000 worse than expected. And people tend to forget, they get lost behind these numbers. Oh, 400,000, that's no big deal because a year ago we were doing a million, a million plus jobless claims per week. But you have to understand, these are people. There's people behind these numbers. You know, it's not 400,000. Oh, okay, whatever. There's 400,000 people in America filing for jobless claims. So, I mean, this is not good stuff for the economy overall. And, you know, like Jerome Powell has been saying, he needs to see unemployment or employment get back to full status before he even considers tapering, you know, the asset purchases, raising interest rates. And will he stick to that? I have no idea. I'm not in that guy's head. I am not in the Federal Reserve. I have no idea what's going to happen. But that is what he's claiming as of now, right? He needs to see employment back to normal. And I mean, hey, are we going to get there? Sooner or later, probably. But as of now, the country, economically speaking, is still struggling. I mean, we're still having hundreds of thousands of people filing for jobless claims every single week. And that's no joke, in my opinion, guys. It's really no joke. But again, the markets, by the way the markets are acting, it seems like the markets don't care and, and they're treating it like a joke, even though, again, it, it's not really a joke whatsoever. These are big, big numbers that we're seeing. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. I would love to know as always. And feel free to smash that good old like button if you guys are enjoying the video. Let's do a challenge. Can we get 200 likes? That should be easy. Can we get 200 likes on this video? Let's make it happen. Hit that like button. Let's make that happen. And without further ado, let's talk about some stocks now. We have a hefty list for this video. Number one is Charge Point. And if you guys remember, I've been buying this, well, not really recently. Uh, um, I was a couple months ago buying it like crazy left and right from the, the $30, high $30 level, and I was buying it heavier on the way down. I believe my most recent buy was at about $20. No joke, guys. You know, I timed the bottom pretty perfectly. Does that happen all the time? Of course not. Of course it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen sometimes. I can tell you that. You know, I can name many times that I've timed the stock perfectly at the bottom and it's gone up. You know, it's uh, it's really luck at the end of the day. I mean, it's not a skill timing the bottom. Don't let anybody tell you it is a skill because that's BS. You know, a lot of the time you don't time the bottom, but sometimes you do. That's the truth. And in this case, I did. And ever since that point, I mean, look, charge point has been breaking out. We took out the, the resistance of the descending triangle. We're seeing a golden cross here. We've seen that over the past couple of weeks. And the golden cross occurred at about $24. And ever since that happened, well, we've gotten to $32, $8 higher per share. We've rallied about 30% from that golden cross point. And that is why it's super important to watch out for the moving average crossovers. You know, they don't always indicate that higher, you know, higher stock prices are coming, but a lot of the time they do. You know, that's what I personally look for. That's one of the biggest indicators I like using when I'm looking for a shift in trend. And look, it happened here, like I said, from 24 all the way to 32 per share. And now we're at a big resistance, $32 per share, 33 per share, which was a sticking point back in the beginning of April. So I'm thinking to myself here, guys, I'm in this. I've positioned myself in this stock. My average is mid, um, roughly mid 20s at this point because I did go heavier in the 20s and especially at $20. So I'm looking at this right now like, okay, if this squeezes out, I don't know how high it's gonna, uh, how high it's gonna go, but if it breaks out of $32 per share, 33, and we start pushing 36, 37, 40 per share. That is where I am likely going to start scaling out, taking profits, and going back to cash. Whether it's 
36 per share, 40 per share. Maybe it gets up to 43, which was the big sticking point back in January. You know, I'm going to be taking profits here. And if you guys want all my buys, sells, all my call outs throughout the day, check out my Patreon. Or you guys can check out the YouTube channel membership, that little join button next to the subscribe button, I believe. is essentially the same thing, the Patreon and the YouTube channel membership. Um, the only difference is on Patreon, you can actually DM me directly on YouTube. You really can't. There's no DM feature, but check it out if you guys want to. Um, you know, those are linked down below. And yeah, charge point, I believe 32 could break, which is why I am still holding on tight. Pinterest is another one that I'm looking at. I'm not in this one quite yet, but we called it out. Did we not? Did we not call it out, guys? I mean, we were looking at this in the mid 50s, and I wish I took the trade, but the truth is, guys, there's only so many stocks you can build positions in. I mean, look, you don't have, I I for sure don't, and I know you guys don't either. Nobody does unless you're Bezos or Mark Cuban or something. Nobody has limitless amount of money where they can just throw money at everything um, because, again, we can only have a certain amount of holdings, whether it's long-term positions, swing trades, day trades, you know, and this is one that I missed, and, I, and I'm pretty mad at myself I missed it because we did call it out, but it's okay. Life goes on, guys. Um, you know, this one held the bottom of the channel at $55. Now we're trading at 73 per share. So this is up almost 25% from that bottom point here at $55, which is crazy. And that was only a little bit over a month ago. So if you bought this a month ago, you're up over 15, 20%, which is unbelievable. And I believe Pinterest, believe it or not, guys, this has more upside. I feel like we could end up going all the way to 79, 80 per share, which is at the top of this channel. And that is where maybe, maybe, we start to see sellers come in, lock profits, and push the thing back down, maybe to the mid-60s, lower 70s again. I'm not sure. But overall, I do think, especially because we had such a good day today, 5%, meaning that momentum is still in, in, in favor of the bulls, You know, I feel like there's more upside in this. So watch out for Pinterest, PINS. Square is another one that we called out, which I wish I took this trade as well, but I didn't. Uh, it's okay, guys. Like I said, life goes on. But this held 198 200 bucks. We called that out at the bottom of the channel. This is essentially the same pattern as Pinterest, no joke. And from 200 now we're trading almost in the mid-200s. We're trading a little bit under 240 a share. So this is up how much? About 15%, 16% as of right now, and I think we're going to see a bit of a sticking point at 245. That was resistance back in December into January, also in the middle of March, also in the beginning of May, you know, so I feel like maybe we see another pump up to about 245, but I wouldn't be surprised if we sold off a bit from there. But then again, if 245 breaks, which is very possible, this I'm thinking could go 266, maybe to about 260 at least, or, or even 270. That's possible. So yeah, square, 5% day, same as Pinterest. I think there's more upside here. AMD, what a day, guys. What a day for AMD. Up over 5.5%. We broke out of the descending triangle of resistance. We're trading well above the moving averages now. And we're actually creeping up towards those highs from the previous earnings report. If you guys remember last time AMD reported, I believe it was the day after. Um, this went all the way to 90 bucks, And it collapsed literally right after the earnings report, which is... Uh, it's not the best sign, especially if you were trading it, but me, I'm actually in this as a long-term investment, and I bought it at 77 per share. This was a couple months ago. Um, I'll show you on the chart here. It was uh, during this period right here in March, April I was buying, and we saw that rally to about 90. I was up about 13 bucks per share. I didn't sell because, again, it's a long-term investment, and now it seems like we're breaking out, like I said. So this is opening up as a trade, in my opinion, especially if AMD cools off a bit, maybe goes down to retest 83 again. We hold 83. Maybe we could ride this up to 90 
and even higher than 90. I ultimately think this will be over 90 per share. Um, I don't know when, obviously, but buying shares, the truth is, um, well, I guess I don't want to say that. I was going to say buying shares, it doesn't matter when it goes up to a certain point as long as you hold on to the shares. But timing is important depending on your strategy. Of course, if you're day trading, timing is important. Swing trading as well. Um, but if you're long-term investing, it doesn't really matter. You can just buy the shares and hold on to them. And options trading also matters about timing. You know, if you're looking at this from an options trading perspective, um, it's a bit tricky there. You know, I'd probably buy some longer term calls, uh, probably at least six to 12 months out to give me some good um, time on my side. You know, you want theta on your side. Um, you don't want uh, a ridiculous amount of time decay. Let's say you were to get options that expired tomorrow or something and it didn't go to 90, guess what? You're going to lose all your money. Or even next week, you bought options expiring next Friday. You know, you're going to lose all your money if it doesn't go to uh, a specific price by then. Or, I mean, you could sell out before, but it's it's risky. You know, when you have time on your side with options, that is the way to go, at least with uh, the way I would trade options. You know, I don't like buying ones that are a week out, two weeks out, a month out. I'd rather buy shares at that point. Um, I like buying options that are more, you know, six, 12 months plus out. You know, I like buying leaps, you know, longer term calls. That is uh, what I do in terms of buying options, selling options. That's a completely different story. You know, maybe I'll make a video on that in the near term future. But overall, AMD watching it closely. Sunrun, what a day. Again, guys, another great day for Sunrun. And we called this thing out yesterday. Recall, uh, do you recall I called it? at about 50 per share, and we pl uh, plowed right through it. I was about to say we plew right through it. That's not even a word, guys. We plowed right through it, right? And that's a good sign, considering 50 was a strong support all throughout October into um, the month of May. And, of course, once the support breaks, what does it become? It becomes resistance. And now that we broke that resistance, I'm thinking Sun Run could run even more, no pun intended, and maybe up to about 56, 57 per share, which was that high point from the middle towards the end of April, also in March a little bit. So watch out for Sun Run. J and J is another one that I'm looking at here. Um, it's not necessarily breaking out quite yet, but I'm seeing an overall ascending triangle forming on the four hour chart. Look at this. We have clear resistance in the mid 170s, but we're making higher lows into that resistance. And I'm thinking the second we clear this downtrend that we're seeing, we break above the 50 and the 180 SMA, um, probably above $167 per share. This is going to make a sizable move upwards, um, whether it's up to 170, 173. I'm thinking we're going to see a move. So I'm putting my alert there. Uh, I think there's three. 4% upside here on Johnson & Johnson. The chart's looking good, but we're not quite breaking out yet, which is why we must be patient. And two more stocks here, guys, before I wrap up the video. Number one is good old NNDM. And look at this. Look at this, guys. We are seeing a inverse head and shoulder, which I haven't really been spotting many of these days. I mean, there was a time period a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago, where I was seeing inverse head and shoulders in these stocks left and right. Literally every stock was, it felt like at least, every stock was an ascending triangle, but or not an ascending triangle, uh, an inverse head and shoulder. And now I'm seeing a lot of ascending triangles. It's, it's weird, right? And uh, yeah, we're seeing an inverse head and shoulder right here on NNDM, left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, we're holding above the 180, and today we actually broke above the 50 SMA. We had a nice 8% green day today. So by the looks of it, this wants to move up higher, whether it's $9, 10 11 I don't know. But by the looks of it, if this could go to about $11.90, $12 per share, that is where the ascending, oh, there we go again. I keep saying ascending triangle. The inverse head and shoulder, that is where it would likely complete, you know, whether we go um, 10, 11, 12, that is the, the, the trajectory that I'm personally seeing right now. And first, we got to break 850, so I'm going to put an alert at 850. And why 850, you may ask? Well, because that was resistance for this whole month so far. We struggled there a couple days ago, last week as well. So I'm going to put an alert there. 
$8.50. There we go. And the last one for today is none other than Tattoo Chef, ticker symbol TTCF. And this went down 3.5% today. And overall, look, this is some profit taking in my opinion. We're seeing a bit of a cool off and this got overbought. I mean, look, it went from 15 to 24 in the span of a couple weeks. That's a 30% rally, guys. That is no joke. That is a massive rally. And things come down when they rally a lot. I mean, things come down. And the past couple of days, it's given back about 10% of that rally, meaning it is still up about 20% over the past month, which I'm taking that. As a long-term investor in the company, I am taking that all day. 20% return on paper in a month. That's fantastic. And I'm thinking we could end up uh, maybe adding more to our swing position, well, at least me, if we end up going down to about 1980 to about 20 bucks per share, right around the 180 SMA. I have a feeling here on the four-hour chart, that is where we could end up bouncing, holding support, and maybe start pushing up towards um, the lower or more like the mid 20s, you know, back where we were, you know, a couple days ago, literally a week ago, $24, $23 per share. So watch out for the bounce there on Tattooed Chef. And just to quickly recap the stocks we talked about Charge Point, Pinterest, Square, AMD, Sunrun, JJ, Nano Dimension, NNDM, and of course, what we just talked about. About tattooed chef so i hope you all enjoyed the video if you did hit the like button consider subscribing and oh by the way don't forget 200 likes on this video can we get that come on guys we could easily get that hit the like button and drop me a comment down below and don't forget to also check out my patreon if you want go to stasserfest.com slash patreon or you can join the youtube channel membership hit that little join button both of those again are essentially the, uh, the same and you get a bunch of perks on there i put so much work in to the Patreon and the YouTube channel membership, guys. It's insane. And make sure to get your two stocks from Webull. Those are valued up to $1,600. Simply deposit $100 and you get two stocks. And you could also get $30 bucks from M1 Finance, $10 bucks from Coinbase. All of those are linked down below. I'll see you all later on. Thanks for tuning in again. As always, I'll pop up a video here I made earlier about five other stocks. I'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in again. Keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.